Hello and welcome again. In this video, we will cover the other components that you need to implement the square and multiply algorithm that we have been discussing for fast modular exponentiation. Now, if you haven't watched the other video, you should watch it, otherwise this will not make any sense to you. Now remember, for the square and multiply algorithm, one key part was to get the binary decomposition of the exponent. So that's what I will explain here. So that's going to be the first component I will explain. So you can see here, I already have kind of like the setup of the program. So I have my big integer and then the exponent. Here is the name of my variable, which I call exponent because it's supposed to be an exponent. And you can call it whatever you want. Of course, any name will be okay. As just as long as you comply with the standards of Java language. And so I define it as I defined it the last time. So here in the quotations, I can put any number I like. So let's say, for example, I put uh, this type of number here. All right. So let's say I want to find a binary representation of that number, which is a big integer type. So as I explained in the other video, it's just, a, just one line of code. And that will produce a string. So it's going to be of the type of a string. A binary representation will be a string of zeros and ones. So uh, let's call that a string some name. So I'm just going to call it binary string. And that's just the name of my variable. Again, you can call it whatever you want. And I just type the name of the variable, which I want the binary representation for, which is exponent. That will be the exponent of my modular exponentiation. And then just that uh, two to string and then parentheses semicolon and here inside that parentheses you put the base so I want the base 2 so I put a 2 there and that's it that will give me just the binary representation of uh, this exponent the exponent so exponent that to string gives me the binary representation and that will be a string now if I want to see what it is I just have to print it out so I already typed the print ln statement here I just need to pro Put down the binary string here. So if I copy this one and paste it over there and save this, and if I run it, then what happens is I'm gonna get the binary representation of this number that is here. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I run it, as you can see here, I have this uh, sequence of zeros and ones that you see there, quite long, but that's the binary representation of uh, my number. All right. So that's one thing we needed to do. So for the uh, square multiplier algorithm, we need to find the binary representation of the exponent. And it's as easy as just typing this line of code. And that's it. Now, the other thing you also wanted to do is for the square multiplier algorithm. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go uh, back and watch those videos because otherwise then this won't make any sense to you. The other thing is you wanted to compute the variable t for the for loop. Now remember in that algorithm square multiplied, there was a for loop and there was a variable t there. That variable t is the length of the binary representation minus 1. And the way that's going to be defined is of type integer. So that variable t is of type integer. Just say integer. That's the variable type. And I'm going to call this call it t. Same as we did in the other video. And then I just put the binary string that I want to compute the length of minus 1. Copy and paste here. And then as you say length, that's how you get the length of the binary string. But t is not the length of the binary string. It's the length minus 1. So that's it. So that is my variable t there. That's the variable that you have to use for the for loop. So and then so what I need to do is let's print it out here. So let me put uh, the... Um, statement here, the, the length of the binary representation of the binary representation would be whatever that length is, which is in the variable t here. So I'm just going to replace this whole thing by t, save it. So what I'm doing here is basically this. I'm getting the binary representation of the exponent with this line of code here. Then after that, what I do is I compute the length the length of that string minus 1, which is uh, how many times the for loop will run. 
and I'm just gonna print it here just to see what it is. So let me run it. So what I have here is 82. So that this is 82 here. So this is all 83 because this is the length minus one. All right. So so that's what it, the second component. Now the third component that you need to do is you need to be able to compare uh, a position of the uh, binary representation with one. Now that's re remember that is part of the if statement of that code. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go back and watch that video because it's important. So I'm just talking about the components of that algorithm. So the next thing is you need to compare. So basically what we are doing is we're talking about a Boolean type. So if something is true, then do that. And if it is false, then don't do it. So what is that uh, Boolean that we are doing? So basically we have a Boolean type that I'm going to call, uh, for lack of name, just let's call it S. And that's going to be equal. I'm going to compare the ith position of my binary string with 1. Remember, you compare that with 1. And if it is 1, then just query multiply, right? All right. So let's see how do we do that. So I already have my binary string, which is this guy right here. And I have to compute the ith position of that string or whatever the position is. So for example, let's say I want to compute the first position. So it's going to be char at because Java considers the first position as one, then I'm, I'm going to say here zero. Zero. That's going to be zero is the first position. Uh, so that's going to be the zero position of that string. Now remember, we need to compare that to one. I know for sure that this is going to give me true. And the reason it's going to give me true is because in that binary representation, that's the first element will always be, of course, 1. So that S in, that, in this case would be true. So let's go ahead and print it out. I'm just going to print out uh, that. And let's say I just, kind of, just want to print out S and just to see what it is, basically. So that basically will give me true in this case. So the last line will be true. So I'm going to uh, save it. Now remember, again, this is the comparison. This whole statement that is here is the comparison that you need to make in the if statement. You're not going to say Boolean. When you, do, when you do it in the if statement, you can just say just this part that I'm highlighting here, just this. And instead of the 0, you have an i there, right? I'm just giving an example. So the first position of the of the binary representation. So if I go, this is true, of course, it's one. Now, what about the, the second position? So let's look up here. That would be the second position of my string that is zero. Because the way Java counts, that would be the, the chart at one. So if I change it here in this line of code, it'll change it at one. What do you think is going to happen there? It's going to give me false, of course, because that would be the second position was zero. So the chart at one will be zero, which is not equal to one. So that's going to give me false. So let's run it. And as you can see, this is false. You see, there's a bunch of zeros here, right? So anything that is in here, this position will give me, uh, for example, zero. So let's compute, let's say, for example, the four, the, the thing at position four, which would be this one, right? So that would be four Java, that would be three. That would also give me false, of course. As you can see here, I get false. So that's it. That's all the, the next, the other components that you need for that specific algorithm. Now, uh, look, again, be careful with this Boolean because when you do it in the if statement, you just need this part. The reason I needed to uh, put it like this is because I need to print it out. So I need to say, okay, it's a Boolean and I need to print it out. But in the if statement, you don't need to do that. Okay, so that's it. That's all the components you need for that um, square multiply algorithm in Java. I gave you all the components, how to write it down, how to define the data types, how to compute with them, uh, how to get the binary representation, how to get the length of the for loop, and how to do the comparison in the if statement. If you put all these things together, then that will give you, of course, the Java uh, 
program that you need to do this uh, to implement with the square multiply algorithm. So the only thing you have to do is just put all these things together, of course. So uh, that's all I have to say about that algorithm. In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to com I'm going to compare. I'm going to talk about another algorithm for fast modular exponentiation, and I will compare the two of them. And the and the way I'm going to compare is I'm going to check which one is let's say faster in the sense that the number of nanoseconds that it takes for each program to do a computation. So I'm going to look at the another algorithm to do fast modular exponentiation. I will compare it with this one we just saw that is the square and multiply algorithm. So in the next video, I will talk about those things. So I will see you in the next video.